the world uses the same languages for playing chess and telling time and reading music. When the United States converts to the metric system, the world will then also use the same language for measurement. In the beginning was the barley corn. Three barley corns equaled the inch. The foot equaled the foot. King Henry's waistline, the yard, and a thousand two-step paces of a Roman soldier, the mile. The inch. The inch was divided into halves, fourths, eighths, sixteenths, thirty seconds, sixty-fourths. Twelve inches equaled a foot. Three feet equaled a yard. And 1,760 yards equaled a mile. Now, this system does have its problems. A simple computation such as finding the number of inches in a mile is never that simple. But now, there is a better way. And it is based entirely on the meter. The meter is about 39 inches long, slightly larger than the yard. But unlike the yard, the meter is divided into 10 decimeters. Or 100 centimeters. Or 1,000 millimeters. 1,000 meters are called a kilometer or kilometer. In addition to milli, centi, deci, and kilo, there is deca, which means 10, and hecto, which means 100. By knowing these prefixes, you are halfway toward knowing the metric system. Now, many calculations are merely a matter of moving the decimal point, not the pencil. But there is more to the metric system than length. The volume of a cube having each side equal to one decimeter, or one-tenth of a meter, is called a liter. The liter is slightly larger than the quart, but unlike the quart, the liter is divided into a thousand cubic centimeters, or a thousand milliliters. The milliliter and the cubic centimeter are exactly the same. When holding pure water at a specific temperature, the liter has a weight of one kilogram. Since kilo means a thousand, a kilogram means a thousand grams. The gram weighs about 0 0.035 ounces, or a weight close to that of a pushpin. So a thousand pushpins should weigh a kilogram, or about 2.2 pounds. Of course, liters and grams may seem a little confusing. That is, until they are put into practical use. But let's see just how simple the old system is. There was the grain, 437 and a half of which made the ounce. 16 ounces made a pound. And 2,000 pounds the ton. As for volume, Two jiggers were a jack, two jacks a jill, two jills a cup, two cups a pint, two pints a quart, two quarts a poddle, two poddles a gallon, two gallons a pail, two pails a peck, four pecks a bushel, two bushels a strike, two strikes a coom, two cooms a cask, two casks a barrel, two barrels a hogshead, two hogsheads a pipe, two pipes a ton. And there, my friends, that story is done. Besides length, weight, and volume, there is one more important measurement to know in the metric system. Temperature. Celsius temperature. 
All scientists use Celsius, formerly centigrade, thermometers, simply because they are more logical and easier to use. In temperature Celsius, boiling water is at 100 degrees, while the temperature of melting ice is at zero degrees. Although all scientists use Celsius thermometers, only the poor American scientist has to go home to Fahrenheit. The metric system was born during the throes of the French Revolution. While in the process of finding a new political structure for their country, the National Assembly also requested that a new standard for weights and measures be found. This job was delegated to a committee headed by the famous chemist Antoine Lavoisier. After many days of contemplation, Lavoisier defined the new unit of length, the meter, as one ten millionth the distance from the North Pole to the equator. Unfortunately, he did not know what this distance was. At once, he commissioned two surveyors to measure the fraction of the distance that lay between Dunkirk and Barcelona. Seven years later, the meter was unveiled to the world. The future standard of measurement was now based on one piece of metal stored in a vault in France. It could neither be scratched, nor stolen, nor lost, for there was no replacement. Scientists couldn't even return to Lavoisier's original measurement because the surveyor's calculations were slightly in error. It was inevitable that a more universal and less fragile standard of the meter had to be found. Light travels in waves. The length of a wave is determined by the distance from one crest to the next. In 1960, the official meter stick became this many wavelengths emitted by the element krypton. Now, any well-equipped laboratory can have this master standard. In 1965, Great Britain began the conversion to the metric system. In 1968, Australia and New Zealand followed suit. In 1970, Canada committed itself to the metric system, leaving the United States as the only non-metric industrial nation in the world. I heard about the U.S. going metric. What I don't understand is why we have to go metric just because the rest of the world does. I thought we stood on our own and didn't let anybody shove us around. You want my opinion? I think the whole thing is nuts. Nuts! You know, he is partly right. Going metric has a lot to do with nuts. And boats. When designing a piece of machinery, it's easier to round off numbers. Although a nut rounded off to eight millimeters is very close in size to one rounded to five sixteenths of an inch, it's not close enough. Metric parts fit only metric machines. And American parts fit only American machines. Because of this, countries using the metric system are reluctant to buy American products that need special tools or special replacement parts. This unavoidable incompatibility wastes a lot of time and a lot of money. Only when the United States converts to the metric system will this frustration come to an end.